Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at my must-have restaurants for every Sims 4 world. And I love how this video has turned out and I'm obsessed with literally all these restaurants. So let's just get into them. I can't wait to show you. Starting off in Brightchester, we have the Brunch and Study Cafe by SimCubes and this lot is perfect for the little town area outside of the two universities because it works as both a cafe and a restaurant so if your sim was just looking to grab a coffee before class or they were looking to sit down and grab a bite to eat, they can do all of that here. Also, there's a really cute study and hangout space upstairs with some amazing lighting for reading and studying the day away. In Tartosa, we have this Italian restaurant by Sweet and Syrupy, and I think that this lot looks just so beautiful and blends into the other buildings in Tartosa so well. Because Tartosa is obviously very like Mediterranean inspired and like old money, bougie energy, at least to me. So I think that this encapsulates that well, and the seating outside is just gorgeous like imagine sitting out there with a drink and some delicious italian food like it's so perfect In Forgotten Hollow, we have Fang's Vampire Diner by Shobin806 on the gallery, and I feel like with the lighting, this lot has old, creepy, definitely vampire energy. Like, this is where vampires hang out to find their next meal, and definitely not the food they're serving, because that can make them feel sick, actually, but yeah, I feel like a low-key type of diner is so good for Forgotten Hollow because a lot of the buildings here are very grand and in my opinion it's nice to have a very low-key place for your vampires to come hang out. For Newcrest, we have the Nine Golden Tigers restaurant by Low Cat Rooster. And the description of this lot says that it used to be a convenience store and was turned into this restaurant. And I love that for Newcrest because the world has such a suburban but low key vibe to it. And I feel like every suburban town has a restaurant like this. And it's also gorgeous in that sense. Like, yeah, it's an old convenience store that's been converted, but every detail just matches what I think this place would look like in real life. In Brindleton Bay, we have the Seaside Food Market by Alexandra FD87. And I don't think I'm alone in thinking that Brindleton Bay needs a little outdoor seafood market. And the actual sit down and be served function that comes with restaurants is only drinks and ice cream on this lot. And all of the seafood you can buy is at the food stalls. So I think that's very cute and unique and helps to make it really feel like a market where you have different options from the different stalls on what you can eat. And also, come on, like, this lot just screams the Brindleson Bay docks area. For 
our Del Sol Valley, this is the Gourmet Restaurant by Pazarin, and I love to put more glamorous feeling lots, like places that rich celebrities would eat in Del Sol Valley, because this is obviously a Los Angeles inspired world, and I think this is perfect for that. It has so many beautiful spots to sit and eat, grab a drink, take some pictures while you're visiting. And I especially love the rooftop area because it is just so beautiful up there and all of the seating and the trees, like, it all just comes together and looks so beautiful. This restaurant is called Hot and Greasy by Low Cat Rooster, and I think that Willow Creek has definitely diner energy like this lot. And what really caught my eye about this lot is that there's space for a busker to play guitar and sing because I feel like little places like this always have something like that going on. Even if they don't sound the best, everyone just kind of vibes with it or or they sit outside <laughs> which luckily there's plenty of outdoor seating here and this lot is just so cute to me and feels like a community staple like everyone in the neighborhood eats here and i love that in sulani we have the waterfront restaurant by sim cubes and I wanted to pick a more luxury feeling restaurant for Sulani because I feel like a lot of people have their sims come here for vacation or their honeymoon or whatever. And I think this is a perfect lot for that. For the nighttime, there's a whole bar and dance floor area. And I love all of the details with the boats. And I just really think it would be so beautiful to sit and eat out next to the water here in real life. And it looks just as beautiful in The Sims. This is the Asia Takeaway Restaurant by Flubber32C4. And I personally love Mount Kamarabi because the lots feel so distinct and have such a unique style in terms of The Sims 4 and capturing that Japanese influence. And this lot is obviously no exception. It is so gorgeous and the outdoor area out front really stands out to me with all of the lighting and the lanterns and the signs. And when I come back to visit this restaurant the next time I play in Mount Kamarebi, I would love for my sims to sit outside and take some pictures out there because it is gorgeous. This is the Copperdale Diner by Lilo1802 on the gallery, and this is a very simple, cute, almost woodsy kind of diner in a way, and it is so cute and cozy, and I feel like it is the small town diner that Copperdale needs. I love the booth seating and the checkerboard floors. It's all just really cozy and comes together perfectly. It is so cute. For Glimmerbrook, we have the Spellcaster Pub by Mipa Chipa, and I actually just made a video going over my must-have lots for Glimmerbrook, and I knew I was going to be making this video, so I held off on using this lot in that video since I don't like to reuse them for these videos if I can help it, but I do think it's the perfect restaurant for this world. It feels woodsy, very small town, and a bit magical without feeling 
overly made for like spellcasters only, but it's definitely the vibes of where I want my spellcasters to be hanging out because it's so cute. And this lot even has the wishing well, which has a really fun gameplay too. For Salva Dorada, we have the Jungle Restaurant by Sweet and Syrupy, and this is such a fun lot for your sims to visit on vacation because it really blends into the environment so well in my opinion. It looks like a structure that was already around and they just turned it into a restaurant. I love the lighting and all of the plants around and yeah, it just looks so good. It's just so Salva Dorada. If that makes sense. This is the Breakfast Cafe by Locat Rooster, and Magnolia Promenade is like an extension of Willow Creek, but it's like the shopping part of it, I guess. And I feel like a cute breakfast cafe diner is so perfect for that. It's still giving small town, but it's sunnier in my opinion than other diners that I featured in this video. A lot of the other diners are more eerie, mysterious almost, but this place feels very wholesome, family breakfast, sunshiny type vibe and it's really cute. This is the Tomarang restaurant by Bruna Souza G, and this feels like a somewhat elegant but still very cozy and distinct style for Tomarang. And I'm really obsessed with the exterior and the general color palette, and also the flooring in here just ties everything together so nicely. I really like the upstairs bar area too, and how this lot just has a lot of detail, like it feels so well thought out and it was just really fun to visit in gameplay. This lot is called Pier 32 by Catsar and it's like a little seafood restaurant out by the water. I mean, that view is just gorgeous. I love this also because it's a very laid back kind of place and I think it's perfect for families to come visit. And I always associate San Sequoia with family gameplay because of growing together. And the environment of this world just looks so aesthetically pleasing, so it's nice to have a really cute restaurant like this where your sims can sit outside by the water, get some fresh air, and just really enjoy it. In Hanford on Bagley, we have the Cozy Cottage Restaurant by Brenda Maureen. And the first things that I noticed about this lot were one, the blossom tree trellis over the tables outside, which is just so stunning. And also the glass roof section of the build because inside of the room where the glass roof is, your sims can sit and eat in there and the lighting is just so good. In general though, this is just a really cute cottage core energy kind of restaurant and let's face it, that's what a lot of us want out of Henford on Bagley. We're just trying to farm and have our cute cottage core moment, so this is perfect for that. This is the Sky Bar Rooftop Restaurant by Fave You Pig Building on the gallery. And this lot feels very unique to me. One, because of the building on top of it that is so cool. Like, I hardly ever see anyone do that. And it also just has a really classy energy where it doesn't feel like 
just a restaurant. It feels like also a bar space where people go just to get drinks and hang out outside and I really love that about it. I really love restaurants where it also functions as a bar or a cafe, so yeah, I'm obsessed and I also love all the plants and decor in here. It just looks so classy, you know? I love it. This is the Flaming Kebab by Bear Hugs 2011 on the gallery, and this is actually a very fancy celebrity restaurant, which I love because I always have celebrity sims live in Oasis Springs. Like, not all of them, but I always have rich, famous sims retire out here in the desert. So, this restaurant is so stunning though. I love the architecture and the use of the Courtyard Oasis kit is just so good. I feel like that's such an underused pack, but has some hidden gems. So yeah, this lot is just gorgeous and I think perfect for Oasis Springs. This is the Strangerville Food Market by Gravy Sims, and obviously Strangerville needs an unconventional restaurant because Strangerville is the weird world in The Sims 4. Even as I was filming this, there were infected, like, poisoned people running around looking real unsettling, so it's more of an open market space, and there's a bar and food stalls and a DJ up top. And the slot really is stunning though, especially at night when it's all lit up. It just looks like the kind of place I want my sims to come grab a drink and hang out. This is Sushi Sims by Winky on the gallery, and originally I was going to pick a more old-fashioned lot for Windenburg, but then I remembered that there's the newer, more modern area, and I just thought this would be perfect. One thing though, if you're struggling to have your sims be seated here, just move the item that's blocking the host stand, because I did have that issue and it's a really quick fix, like you just have to take that item and delete it, but I just thought I'd mention that, but... Yeah, anyway, this lot is such a vibe, especially the really cute outdoor area. I am obsessed. So this is the Granite Falls Diner by Miss Sim Reno. And I love the log cabin look of this lot. It's obviously perfect for Granite Falls, and I love that there's some activities for your sims to do here, aside from just regular restaurant stuff, like the swings and the horseshoe thing, because you're obviously visiting here for a vacation and you might bring kids with you, and even if not, your adult sims can use that stuff too. I just think it's cute to have those outdoor activities because your sims are camping and are meant to just unplug and vibe outside. Also, I didn't mention this yet, but all the decor here is super cute too. This is the Steakhouse Restaurant by Marmalade Art, and I think this is so good for Chestnut Ridge. It feels very much like the heart of the town if that makes sense like it's very open it's two stories and you can see down to the bar and main dining area from the upper level and it's country and wooden and just all things chestnut ridge it feels very lively and just exactly what i want from a restaurant in a country world like this
This is The Caboose by Miss Simreno, and this is actually a renovation or a redo of the bar lot that comes with Evergreen Harbor. And this lot is so much cuter than the original. I'm obsessed with the lighting on the first floor. And also I love how this lot feels kind of like classy, cute vibes, especially on the outside but very like DIY on the inside in a way. I think that's perfect for Evergreen Harbor. This lot is the Moonwood Mill food truck by Ralucci on the gallery. And I figured that Moonwood Mill would have something a bit more DIY compared to like a normal restaurant. And I love that it's also like an outdoor movie type of space, very, very woodsy and just kind of thrown together. And I think that's really cute. And they even have some pet bowls and dog toys lying around as this is obviously the werewolf world and you never know what can happen there. Those are all of the restaurants I have for you today. Let me know which one was your favorite. I really love making these kinds of videos. So also let me know which types of lots I should do next. I'm planning on doing cafes, parks, and maybe like spas and gyms combined at some point. And yeah, so just let me know what you guys want to see next. And thank you all so much for subscribing and for all of the love. I just love you guys. So yeah, thank you and I'll see you in my next video.